Hello everyone, welcome back to Real Analysis. Today we'll be proving some limits using the definition. The definition is written over here if you just need it for the reference. The first problem we'll be trying to do is prove limit 1 over n. Um, by the way, these all are sequence equals 0. If you want to do it yourself, go ahead and pause the video and come back to this after you have done. So let's take epsilon to be some arbitrary positive number, epsilon greater than 0. And choose n to be any number greater than 1 over epsilon. Then whenever n is greater than n, n would be greater than 1 over epsilon. And 1 over n would be less than 1 over epsilon, one would be less than epsilon and 1 over n minus 0 would be less than epsilon this completes our proof let's look at another problem let me see the color and this problem would be limit 1 over let's choose n square we'll be proving 1 over n square equals 0 um, if you want to pause the video then go on and pause it um, as always um, take epsilon to be any arbitrary positive number then we would choose n to be any number greater than 1 over root epsilon so if you do so then Whenever n is greater than or equal to n, n would be greater than 1 over epsilon, 1 over root epsilon, or 1 over n square would be less than epsilon, 1 over n square, that's same as, since n is positive number, it is same as 1 over n square minus 0, is less than epsilon. So whenever we choose n greater than n, then this will be less than epsilon, for any arbitrary positive epsilon. So this completes our proof. Let's look at another one. Limit n plus one over n equals one. Go on and pause the video if you want to try this on your own. Okay, hope you had a go. I'm gonna show you. As always, choose epsilon to be any arbitrary positive number. And we'll be choosing n to be greater than 1 over epsilon. So whenever n is greater than or equal to n, this implies n is greater than 1 over epsilon or 1 over n is less than epsilon since n is positive this means that 1 over the modulus of 1 over 1 is n is less than epsilon and 1 over n can be written as n plus 1 over n minus 1 because n over n would be 1 and 1 over n would be remaining and 1 and 1 cancel out that's just algebra trick nothing more fancy here n plus 1 that should be less than epsilon and this is what we are trying to do n plus 1 over n minus 1 so this completes our proof okay let's try to do some some of the harder ones I will do one more here and remaining would be in the next video. Um, which one shall I do? Okay, let's do a really tough one. Where A, B, C, and D are real numbers, and A and C aren't zero. 
a comma c is not equal to zero we're going to be proving we're going to be proving this limit to be a over c if you want to have a go then go on and pause the video okay as always let epsilon to, to be any arbitrary positive number and if some position if we are able to find some positive number n some natural number n so that whenever n is greater than n then this the modulus of this minus this would be less than epsilon if we are able to find such n then our proof should be done so let's see if we can find some such n or not So what we are trying to do is, if n is greater than o equal to n, then a n plus b minus c n plus d minus a over c is less than epsilon. So if we are able to find some n such that this is true. Then we're ready to do. We're ready to go. Let's see if we can find such an or not. Let's try to find out first. So, if we do this, some kind of algebraic trick, and try to solve this, you should be getting um, a c n negative a c n. That would be kind so. So you should be getting b c minus a d. Everything in the numerator would cancel out and denominator it should be c square n plus cd less than epsilon this is same as saying this so we need to be we need to be proving this um there are two cases which arise either the numerator could be greater denominator is always positive so either the numerator could be greater than zero or less than zero so if bc minus ad is greater than zero, then then what we will have to do is let's try to find out. If since this is positive, the the things inside the modulus wouldn't change if we take away the sign of modulus. So we want this to be less than epsilon. If this is, if this was less than zero, then we'd have AD minus BC here. Okay, then if we solve for the n, we should get n equals BC minus AD over epsilon C square, and this would D would be go to the next side, and C square would be in the denominator minus d over c so if we take n to be this then our thing would be satisfied if this was if bc minus az was less than zero then everything would be same other than it would be ad minus bc and our selection of the n should, n would be ad minus bc over epsilon c square minus d over c so our choice of the n would be something like this so let me go back off for a bit so whenever f whenever epsilon is arbitrary we would be able to find some n such that this would be true this thing would be true and that n is this when bc minus ad is greater than zero and this when bc minus ad is less than zero that's the difference of the limit right we should be able to find some natural number such that whenever we go we have we take the number sequence further than the the difference between the sequence and limiting value should be less than the epsilon so if we take n to be this uh, upon our arbitrary choice of epsilon then we are ready to go so this completes the proof. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Peace out for now.